formerly known as Maersk, is a deployment utility that will allow you to deploy your Ruby on Rails application. It is a great utility that I've been using to deploy Drift and Ruby for the past several weeks, and it's been a really great experience. The documentation lacks a bit on some of the different configurations that are possible, but in this episode, I want to show how we can use Kamal to deploy our Ruby on Rails application from GitHub Actions. We will be using a Rails 7.1 application, which isn't required, but you would need to have your own health monitor configured if you're using an old version of Rails. We'll also be using SQLite to host our database. This is a single node deployment, so there are less moving parts than you would typically have, but the same steps should work regardless of your infrastructure as we'll be running the Kamal deploy command from within GitHub Actions. There is a word of caution about this approach since we'll have to expose a private SSH key to the GitHub Actions. So you'll want to make sure that you have the appropriate security configurations on GitHub for anyone who has access to the project. This kind of thing typically concerns me as we are introducing a vulnerability point where if our GitHub account were compromised, then we would have our application code compromised as well as the production environment. However, if you are using GitHub Actions or any CI CD pipeline for deploying your application to a production environment, then this is already likely the case. And so one of the interesting things that we will be looking at is that the first deployment that I did, you'll see that it took around six minutes. However, the subsequent deployment took much less time. And that's because we are going to be looking at adding caching as a step as well. So if there aren't too many changes between deployments, then your subsequent deployments will go much faster. And for this deployment, we are going to be setting up a DigitalOcean droplet, which I'm going to use a Debian, but you could use Ubuntu as well. And we're just going to use a basic $8 a month VM, which has one gigabyte of RAM and one Intel processor. Another thing is that we are going to be using an SSH key. I do have a public key already uploaded. However, you can create a new SSH key, follow the instructions on the right hand side, and then copy out the public key, paste it in to use that as well. I do recommend not using a SSH key that you've been using for other things, as if this is ever compromised or if you ever need to roll the key, then you're going to be able to do that much easier if you don't have to change it in many places. So we'll go ahead and create this droplet. And once this is done, I'm going to copy the public key and I'm going to come over into Cloudflare, which is hosting my DNS. And I'm going to update the app.r2y.dev to this new public IP address. We'll save the changes. And the only other thing that we need to note is that under the TLS, I do have this set to full. So we are going to be using a server certificate on our virtual machine. And then this is going to go through Cloudflare. And we will have a certificate as well. We could bypass the Cloudflare proxy if we wanted to use our origin certificate, which we are going to be using Let's Encrypt to issue our certificate. But that's really up to you on how you want to handle that. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.